St. Mark AME Church is not here to simply occupy a building, but to serve. You are important to us. When you fall into tough times, we're here. Every second and fourth Sunday from 1 until 2.30, you'll find a pop-up pantry on our grounds when the weather permits and inside the church facility when it does not. Besides healthy, nutritious food, you'll also find prayer, encouragement, and listening ears. St. Mark is a welcoming community, fostering a sense of belonging. Community is important. And here, we want to make sure no one in this community has to go without essential needs. That's the reason for the pop-up pantry. No application or sign-up required. Remember, we're here every second and fourth Sunday from 1 until 2.30 at 1616 West Atkinson Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53206. You are important to us, so let's stay connected. Find out about and even watch special events, services, and community outreach by liking us on Facebook and subscribing to our YouTube channel, St. Mark AME Church Milwaukee, or head to our website, stmarkame.org. You don't want to miss a thing. We strive to encourage, nourish, and enlighten, and even have some fun. So thank you for making St. Mark a part of your lives. Stay connected. Welcome to the services of St. Mark AME Church. Reverend Dr. Joy L. Gallman is our pastor. We invite you to join us as we worship and hear the divinely inspired Word of God. Welcome to St. Mark African Methodist Episcopal Church and our Sunday morning worship experience. We want to remind you that today, um, November the 14th at one o'clock, we have our pop-up pantry. And today we will also have 150 turkeys that we will be giving away um, in the Quality of Life Number 2 building at 1530 West Atkinson Avenue. That is the pop-up pantry today beginning at 1 p.m. We also want to share with you our excitement that the stewards and trustees are praying and prepping for us to be back in the building on um, the 21st of November at 10 a.m. for in-person worship. Again, that is November the 21st at 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary. We will ask and we are requiring that you wear a mask. Um, we will do temperature checks and we will continue to do social distancing in the sanctuary. And that's November the 21st at 10 a.m. Last week, we kicked off a um, new sermon series um, titled More Than Enough. More Than. Um, today, we will be talking about More Than Enough. We want to encourage you to study and to read Psalm 139 and also Genesis chapter 1. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's time for worship. Exalt. 
exalt his name forever. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him and lift him up. Praise him. Exalt his name forever. Praise. Praise him. Praise him and lift him up. Come on, praise. Praise him. Exalt. Exalt his name forever. One more time. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him and lift him up. Praise him. Exalt his name forever. One more time. Praise him. Praise him. Come on, saints. Praise him and lift him up. Help me say. Praise him. Exalt his name forever. Exalt, Exalt his name to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the presence of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For there thy presence is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the presence of my God than to dwell in the presence of wickedness. Because of the presence of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that are planted in the presence of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, O Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the, For the Lord, Lord is in his holy temple. Let all your earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Together, O, o sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Song. I'm praising my 
Father God, we are thankful for giving us this day, a day that we have not seen before with this day. Lord, we rest in the assurance of your love and mercy. Lord, help us to see your goodness in everything that we do, so that God, through our actions, we can glorify you and help bring others closer to you. God, we thank you for your love and mercy and just being the great God that you are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah to the God of everything. Hallelujah to the God who makes a way out of no way. Hallelujah to the God who heals our body, the God who allows us to wake up every day clothed and in our right mind. Hallelujah for the God who gives us the strength and body, mind, and spirit to continue to go to work so that we might earn a living, that we might be able to provide for our loved ones. God, hallelujah to the God who loved us enough to keep us in the middle of a pandemic. Hallelujah to a God who makes a way. It's to that God who loved us enough to give us access to all the promises of God that we cry out hallelujah. Hallelujah to a God who loved us enough to give us Jesus, his only begotten son, so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah in this place today. It's with the hallelujah spirit that we are to discipline ourselves to give back to God a portion of what God has given to us. God does not demand half. God doesn't require 15 God simply asks out of honor to who God is and in recognition of what God has done for us and how God continues to provide for us, how God continues to make a way for us, that God asks us to acknowledge who God is by disciplining ourselves to give 10%, which is the tithe. And so we encourage those of you who are not tithers to test God and see, to see if God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings of peace and joy and hope when we discipline ourselves to tithe. We want to encourage you to be prayerful about tithing and to press your way. Maybe you have to start doing 1% or 2% or 3% or 5% and continuing to increase it month by month or quarter by quarter until you get to the 10%. But press your way to give, not because Pastor Joy asked you to, not because we need to keep the lights on at the church and everything going, but because God is worthy of our obedience to the word of God. And if you can give him a hallelujah with your mouth and your heart and your spirit, you ought to be able to trust God enough to give your tithes and your offering um, as a hallelujah to God as well. And so in this moment, I pray 
that God will increase your faith, that God will increase your ability to trust in God, that God will move upon your spirit to give God a hallelujah with all of your being, with your times and your ta- with your time and your talents and your resources as well as your financial resources, that you will celebrate with a hallelujah and give for the upbuilding of God's kingdom, for the expansion of the realm of God so that we might continue to do the work of God here at a place called St. Mark. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that as God moves on your heart to give on whatever platform you choose, that you will have a peace that surpasses understanding, that you'll be able to connect to a joy a joy not found in riches or fame, but a joy found in Jesus. I pray that those of you who are tithers and those who are uh, pressing your way towards tithing, that God will bless you in a way that will encourage you in this um, spiritual discipline. I pray peace over your homes and your jobs and your children and everyone connected to you, that God will honor your obedience in the name that is above every name. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. And the people of God said, amen. My name is Shirley Smith. I'm one of the stewards here at St. Mark. I'm with the safety committee. We are getting ready to re-enter the building. We want to make sure that everyone is safe that comes back to the building. We have gone with all of the CDC rules. We have face masks, we have temperature um, gauges, we have hand sanitizer. Uh, If you don't have a mask, we will have one for you. We are excited about re-entering the worship service. This is the Lord's house, and we would love to enter it with praise and worship. When you come, come early enough so that you can sign in and get your proper seating. And remember, we have to be social distant. I would love to see your smiling faces. God bless you, God keep you, is my prayer. Good morning, church family. This is Brian Mitchell, steward of St. Mark. We're getting towards the end of the year, and this is typically a time when a lot of us take advantage of our gift card program. There have been a few changes, and since we won't be in the building every week, you still may take advantage of the gift card program by signing up with RaiseRight. This is available at www.shopwithscript.com. Using the RaiseRight app, you have the ability to order gift cards directly to your house, to send them to your loved ones, or to shop in store or in a restaurant to purchase things while you're out and about this holiday season. The gift card program is not just a holiday program, it's year round and downloading the Raise Right app will help you take advantage of that. Thank you for your continued support of our gift card program. Hello church, my name is Elizabeth Words and I'm here to give you details about St. Mark's Angel Tree Ministry. Yes, yes, it's that time of the year Again, we are asking you to donate $40 to purchase a Walmart gift card for each child to cover a clothing and a toy gift. We have 81 children on our list to serve. With your help, we can bring a little Christmas cheer this year for each of them. As done last year, the caregivers will come to the Quality of Life Building Number 2 on Saturday, December 18th to pick up the gifts. You can mail or drop off a check to St. Mark, putting Angel Tree Ministry on the memo, do it electronically, noting it to Angel Tree Ministry, or use the Angel Tree funds on the online giving page. Our committee wants to thank you in advance for all your help. You bring joy to many families each year.
Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart, my contentment, hope for all I do. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the fire and light when the nights are long and cold. Oh, in sadness, you are the laughter that shadows all my fears. When I'm all alone, your hand is there to hold. Can you help me say, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all. more thing you are why I find pleasures in the simple things in life you're the music in the meadows and the streams oh the voices of my children my family and you're the source and the finish of my highest dream. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my, my You're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect, it comes from you. You see, you are the heart of me. You're the heart of my contentment. Oh, Center, the center of my joy, of my joy, Jesus, you are, you are the center, the center of my joy, of my joy, you are my everything, Jesus, Jesus. you are my hope, you are your my joy in a time of sorrow, of my joy, you are my everything, Jesus. you are my everything. Yes, you are Lord.
Psalm 139. Psalm 139 from the New Revised Standard Version. And I'll read verses 1 through 18, but I encourage you to read it in its entirety. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in and behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Shalom, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even in the darkness, the darkness is not too dark for you. The night is as bright as day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed me, who formed my inward parts. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end, and I'm still with you. Today is the second in a three-part series of more than. Last week was more than a conqueror. Today is more than enough. God, preach this, your preacher, not for her vain glory, but preach this, your preacher, so that your sons and your daughters who do not know you in the pardon of their sins might be saved. Preach, God, so that the unchurched might be church. Preach, God, so those who have been beaten down 
under the weight of feeling not enough might be reminded that they are more than enough in you. Do it, God. And we'll be mindful to give your name all the honor, the glory, and the praise. And the people of God said, amen. I watched the color purple the other day for the umpteenth time. And it occurred to me while I watch, was watching this time that among the many themes that you can find and that show up in the color purple, one of the themes that occurred to me was that when life, that what happens when life convinces a person that they are not enough. Celie is told by the father of her children, a man that she was also told that was her father, but turned out not to be, that she was ugly even when she smiled. Suge was told by a boy named Albert that she was not enough when he chose to follow the demand and directives of his father than his heart. Suge was told by the actions of her father who was a preacher and a pastor that sinners have no place in the father's house. Each and every time Mr.'s father called Mr.'s manhood into question, Mr. internalized the fact that he was not enough. Over and over, we see splashed across the screen characters who have been told their entire lives that they are not enough, and they believe it. And as a result, the abused become abusers. The shunned abuse themselves. And the abused begin to think that this is all there is. Hmm. Sometimes the movie screen often depicts what happens in real life. This world seeks to convince us every day that we are not enough. The images we see, the music we listen to, the shows we watch, the TikTok videos, the YouTube videos, and the sum of the sermons we hear tell us that we're not pretty enough. We're not tall enough. Not thin enough, not smart enough, not successful enough, not patient enough, not creative enough, not good enough parent, not educated enough, not talented enough, not organized enough, not saved enough, not righteous enough. Life has a way of telling us that the Shugs of the world got talent, that Shug can sing, that Shug got spunk, that Shug can talk to anybody and stand up and be noticed, and we keep being asked what you got. We keep being told you're ugly, you're skinny, you're shaped funny, you're too scared to open your mouth to two, and all we're good enough is to be Suge's maid. Over and over again, when we try to raise ourselves up and believe again, we're told that we don't have the power to, we're told that we're black, we're poor, we're ugly, we're a woman, that we're nothing at all. Hmm. Disappointments and tragedies and death invite us into a space of believing that there is something innately lacking in us that we deserve, that we've somehow earned the state of being less than. Life has a way of beating us quietly into believing we are not enough. But we stop by this Lord's day to remind you that you are enough. You are enough. You don't have to strive to become more worthy or more valid or more accepted just to be loved, that you are already those things. We stop by to remind you this Lord's day that you are enough. We stop by in this preaching moment to help all of us to see what God sees when we look in the mirror at ourselves. We stop by in this preaching moment to speak to uh, speak over ourselves, to learn how to speak over ourselves and into our future what God says about who we are and to live in the fullness of who God created us to be. Enough. And Pastor Joy, so what do we do when the attacks and the stress awaken our insecurities and resurrect our childhood traumas that awaken old demons that whisper in our ear that we are not enough? We go to the word of God 
to remember and to recite what God says about who we are. And Psalm 139 is one such place to go. Psalm 139 bears witness to an all-knowing, um, omnipresent, omnipotent God. Psalm 139 bears witness to a God who knows all, who is everywhere at once, and who has unlimited power and the authority to do anything. Psalm 139 bears witness that this omnipresent, om omnipotent God knows the writer of this song. Not only is this all is a homage to an all-seeing, all-knowing, all-powerful God, but this God knows the writer of the song. Lord, you have searched me and known me. You, you know when I sit down and when I get up. You know my thoughts from far off. You search out my path and my lying down. You are acquainted. You know all my ways. The psalmist is bearing witness that the divine you knows me. The divine God knows me. That the God who spoke light and light appeared knows me. That the God who separated the light from the dark and called the light day and the dark he called night knows me. That the God who created the heavens and earth and the sea knows the right of the God who spoke to the earth and the earth produced green seed and, the, and spoke to the ocean and there became creatures that swept. The God who decided, let us make humanity in our own image, in our own likeness so that they can rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over the livestock. This God who created humanity in God's own image, in the image of God, he created male and female. That God knows me. If that God who knows the writer, he's not talking about a superficial knowing, just simply knowing the name that's on the birth certificate. It's talking about knowing, truly knowing the essence of who you are. Oh. He's talking about a level of knowing, of knowing that you got a smart mouth, knowing that you got a beautiful mind, not like a beautiful mind as in a beautiful picture, but as a beautiful mind as in a beautiful mind moving. And yet, God loves you. God knows the writer. God knows you and I. God knows your curves and all your edges, your beautiful um, imperfections, your perfect imperfection. La, uh, John Legend wrote the song, but I believe that God truly is speaking what John wrote in this passage, that God speaks of being known in Psalm 139 the same way John Legend talks about being known. He knows his actions, his thought, his mind, his heart, his very essence and being, not the mask that he puts on for society, not the mask that he puts on on his job, not the mask that he wears when he comes to church, not the mask that he wears when he deals with his family, but knows the very resource of his being, to be known by a God like this is powerful and transforming. Psalm 139 goes on to say, even before the word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hear me in and behind and before you lay your hands on me. Uh, I can't imagine how you can know all this because the knowledge is too high and too wonderful for me. He begins to explain that he understands the kind of God this is, that there is no place that he can go where God is not there. As a child, when I heard this psalm, section of the psalm preached and taught, I thought that God, it was presented in such a way that the writer was trying to escape the presence of God. That they were the writer was trying to get away and hide from God. But as I look at this psalm today, I realize the psalm writer is simply saying that everywhere I am, you are. In the deepest, darkest hole of depression, you're there. On the greatest days of celebration, you're there. 
You're there when I have plenty of money. You're there when I don't have any money. You're there at the birthing room. You're there in the cemetery. You're there in ICU. You're there in the sanctuary. Wherever I find myself, my God who knows me. The God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills is there. The God who holds healing in his hand is there. The God who can make the straight, the crooked places straight is there. Whatever situation I'm in, my God is there. Hmm. Biblical scholar John Clinton McCann Jr. sums up Psalm 139 this way. He simply says that the writer is fully and completely known by God. That this assurance of being known by God and being and belonging inseparably from to God, it serves that this knowledge, this relationship, this understanding of who God is serves as the foundation for petitions and affirmations. It's because that the psalm writer knows that God knows him, that the psalm writer knows who God is, and that he realizes that wherever he is, God is there as well. It's that foundation. It's that knowing. It's that understanding. It's that faith that allows him to celebrate himself and to go to God with all of his concerns. It is when you are known by the God, the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth that you can walk into spaces not designed for you in authority rather than arrogance. When you recognize that you are known by the God of all that is, you can look in the mirror and see what God sees and say to your reflection with confidence, rather than delusion. And you can look at yourself and say, ah, for it was you, oh God, who formed my inward parts and knit me together in my mother's womb, and I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and I know it very well. Hmm. This psalm, This psalm was written to express the assurance and the desires of a post-exiled community. And yet, it speaks truth and power to generations even today, right where you are. Stop what you're doing. Find something that you can see your reflection in. Use your phone or maybe... Um, the window or the glass behind you. If you can't get to a space where you can see your reflection, just close your eyes and visualize yourself standing in front of a mirror and look into your own eyes. Got it? And I want you to repeat after me. I praise you, God, for I am fearfully, come on, say Mark, come on, sanctuary, let's start again. Close your eyes. See yourself standing in front of a mirror. Look into your own eyes and repeat after me. I praise you, oh God. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. I am, I know very well. I know very well. Amen. I encourage you to make that a part of your daily routine. When when you are struggling with something and you're feeling uncertain and you're feeling undervalued and unworthy, stop yourself and remind yourself, I praise you, O God, 
For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. The psalm writer throws in on verse 14 this affirmation after understanding that he is known by God the God, the divine, and he throws in this affirmation and he begins by saying, I praise you, I give thanks, I bear witness, I give thanks, I live in gratitude, I shout hallelujah, but I also shout hallelujah with my actions and the way that I treat my neighbors. I praise you, oh God, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, fearfully when translated from the Hebrew, means with great reverence, heartfelt interest, and respect. It, it, create, it, it talks about a created with great reverence, a heartfelt interest, and respect to be unique and set apart. Oh, you ought to look at yourself in the mirror and praise God that you are, are that you are set apart, that you are unique, that you are fearfully made, that you are not made to be be afraid of, but you are made with reverence to God, that you are God's handiwork, that you deserve to be treated with respect just because you are. Yes. I encourage you to look in your mirror and say, I thank God because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful. Wonderfully made in a way that inspires delight and admiration extremely well. Wonder as a noun is the feeling of surprise mingled with admiration caused by something beautiful, <laughs> something unexpected, something unfamiliar, something exquisite. I know some of you have never heard anybody refer to you that way. Well, I'm going to refer to you that way today in the name of Jesus. You are beautiful just the way God created. You are an unexpected blessing just the way God created. You are something unfamiliar, something like um, nobody else or anything anybody else has ever experienced. You are explicit. You are uh, exotic. You are are beautiful because you are made in the image of God. You are enough. The New International Version says, your works are wonderful. The New King James Version says, marvelous are your works. Ah, can I help us today? God knows you. Knows everything about you. <laughs> you are created in God's image. God knows everything that you've done and everything that's been done to you. And the world says that there are some things that can be done to you that you can never recover from, that diminish your worth. But I stop by to remind you that God knows you and God knows what has happened to you. And God still declares that you are a marvel. You are a wonder. You are an astonishment because there is no one like you. You are a wonder. You are a marvel, not because you're better than somebody else, but simply because you were created by the God of the universe. You were created in God's image. And when God created them, God blessed them. God said, that's good. And so it doesn't matter whether the world validates you or not. You look in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm a wonder. I'm a marvel. to silence the voice that declares that you are not enough. You have to be like the writer of Psalm 139 and not just recite the affirmation, but you have to seal it with I know very well. The New International Version says I know full well. And some of you all who have grown up in black homes know what full means. I know good and full well you didn't do. That means that I know that I know. 
the King James Version says, I know and that my soul knows very well. That is a knowing that you know that you know that nobody can take from you. That is a knowing that you know something to be so true that even when life tries to tell you something different, you're like, no, I know what I know. Even when situations show up in your life to strip your dignity, you can declare, no, I know I am a marvel. I know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made and wonderfully and marvelous are the works of God. I know that I know that I am the head and not the tail. Pastor Joy, I hear you preaching, but you don't know what it's like to feel like you're not enough. Pastor Joy, you grew up with parents who love you, gave you everything you asked for. You don't know what it's like not to be enough. Pastor Jew, you've received great appointments. You don't know what it's like. I can tell you what I do know. I know what it feels like to graduate from Candler School of Theology, Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, with two children in elementary school and graduate on time only to be told by a presiding elder not to be disappointed when I get to an annual conference and they don't give me a church. What I do know is what it feels like to be excited to, be, to go to the annual conference that ordains you as a pastor now, only to sit next to a preacher and be able to have the privilege to sit in the visiting preacher section only to sit next to an old preacher I didn't even know who leaned over and said, it's a pity you couldn't stay married. With, with genuine pity in his voice and shook his head and said, it's going to be hard for you without a husband. What I know is that how many times I was told I was being selfish and that divorce was going to ruin my children's lives. Trust me, I know what it's like to be told you're not enough. The truth is, I'm no different from anybody else. The truth is that if I'm not careful, exhaustion, stress, attacks, Disappointment can feed dormant insecurities. And those old demons that were under my feet a week ago will rise up and plant thoughts of worthlessness in my spirit. Sometimes even pastors have to remind themselves that they are known by God. Hmm. When the enemy rises up and slips into those spaces. I use music to beat them back into their place. Tasha Cobbs, I think, shares a spirit with whoever wrote Psalm 139. She sings a song, and I couldn't find out. I think she even may have written it herself. And the title of the song is, You Know My Name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You Thank you. 
how you counsel me. Time you know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. Oh. You know my name. You know how he talks with me. He talks. Oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me. Oh, how he tells me. That I am. That I am his all. And I play that over and over and over. And it reminds me. That because God knows me, that God knows my name, God knows everything about me, God knows everything that's happened to me, God knows everything that's said about me and done to me, and everything that I've said and done about someone else, and yet, God calls me his own, he walks with me and talks me, and because of who God is, I know that no fire can burn me, no battle can turn me, no mountain can stop me, because God holds my hand, that I can walk in victory, not because of who I am, but because of the power of God at work in my life, I know that no demon in hell can defeat me, I know no giant can defeat me, not because of who I am. But who God is, no mountain can block my way, no fire can consume me, no battle can break me. Because I am his own. And in those moments, we... We find ourselves going to the psalm, whether it be Psalm 139 or whether it be this song or another song, but it reminds us that God sees us and God hears us. And, and then when I get myself a little bit together, I go and read the word. I go and recall the word and I remind myself about what the God word of God says about who I am. And I don't stop with the praise that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. But I keep going and declaring that the word of God says that I am confident in this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. When you find yourself feeling that you're not enough, feeling unworthy, feeling hopeless, feeling like sugar, feeling like Celia, or feeling like Pastor Joy. You go back to the word and you look and see what God says about who you are and you stand yourself up in front of the mirror and declare what the word of God says. The word of God says that I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten. I will repay you for what the harper and the destroyer and the cutter have eaten the word of God says that I it is written that I has not seen ear has not heard nor has entered into the heart of man the things of God that God has prepared not for just everybody but for those who love them when you find yourself feeling less than and wanting to give up and settle for what God beneath what God has for you you go to the word of God and be reminded that you are enough you are enough you don't have to strive to be worthy you are worthy of peace and joy and hope and love you are valid you have value if God takes care of the flowers in the field 
and the weeds on the side of the road. Surely God will take care of one made in God's own image. Surely if God takes care of the doves and God takes care of the birds that you can buy five for a quarter, surely God will take care. Surely those made in image of God have value and are worthy of love. You are enough. But there are some things in this life that need more than enough. And in order to have access to more than enough, you got to know Jesus. Romans 8 and 28 says, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. But in order for us to have access to that promise, we have to accept the fact if we want more than enough, if we want to be more than enough, we have to accept in our hearts and believe that God loved us so much that God gave God's only begotten son so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. That God gave Jesus to be born of a virgin Mary to teach us how to live and to die on a cross for debts he did not earn so that you and I might be more than enough so that you and I might have access to Romans chapter 8 verse 31 through 38 so that we can know that we know that no matter what comes that we can know that we know that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus so that we can know that we are more than enough not because of what we can obtain, not because of what we do, but simply because of who God is in this world. If you want to have access to more than enough, more than enough peace, more than enough joy, more than enough hope, more than enough love, more than enough patience, you got to have a relationship with God. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You don't have to be taller or shorter or wider or thinner. You don't have to be married or divorced or single and say, you don't have to be any of that. You just have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the grace of God made available in Christ Jesus right where you are. You are worthy of this kind of love. You are worthy of this kind of love. And I pray in the blessed name of Jesus that, that you will recognize your worth and your value to God. That God sees you, that God knows you. That God wants to be in relationship with you through the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray that in this moment that you will not only recognize your value and your worth to God, that you are enough, but that you will believe by faith and have access to more than enough because of the God who loves you, the God who knows you, the God who gives us power to call out our enemies and our opponents, our adversaries, and not people, but the adversary and the enemy and the foe of depression and debt and insecurity and anxiety and fear and doubt and overthinking. Our more than enough comes in Jesus. The more than enough goes to work in us and allows us to know that greater is he that is at work on the inside of us, Jesus, than any enemy in this world. God, in the name of Jesus, I speak the knowledge and the knowing and knowing that they know that they are enough. I pray in the name of Jesus that those who have been separated from the church the church universal behind church hurt, that they will be healed, oh God, and be able to rejoin 
in relationship with you and a church that can speak to their needs. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will heal your people from all of the moments that told them that they were not enough. Let them know, let them feel your presence, oh God, right where they are. Touch them, oh God. Let them feel your power. Let them feel your love flow in them and so that they will be convinced that they are enough. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that somebody accepts you as your pers their personal savior and come in relationship with you anew or again. God, I pray that you will connect them to a faith community, oh God, a place where they can serve and be served, a place where they can grow and grow the kingdom, a place where their gifts will be nurtured, where their gifts will be challenged, where their gifts can be used for the blessing to God's people. God, I pray that you will connect those who are disconnected to a body of faith, oh God. Do it, God. Not for the individual denomination or church or pastor or leadership's glory, but do it, God so that this world can know, that this people can know that they are enough, that you know them, that you love them, and that they are your own. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. And the people of God said, amen and amen. We bless God for the music ministry this Lord's Day. We bless God for... Um, we bless God for Brother Nathaniel, oh God. We bless God for Brother Joe Nathaniel, who um, is um, interceding for us. Amen. And we bless God for the choir members um, who um, are blessing the church and blessing the world by um, allowing their gifts to be used. Amen. Please, 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 my brothers and sisters, be reminded. <laughs> Be reminded that we will be back in the building on November the 21st at 10 a.m. for in-person worship. Um, we encourage you um, that if you are not vaccinated, um, we, we respect your decision, but we encourage you for your safety um, to continue to worship virtually. Um, we will um, require everyone to wear a mask, fully covering their mouth, fully covering their nose. Um, we will have... Um, Places where you can sanitize, the church will be sanitized before we enter and after we leave. Um, all of that will be taken care of, but we encourage you, if you are not feeling well, that you will continue to worship virtually. Um, we are looking forward to it. The stewards and trustees are working diligently to make sure that everything goes well. Um, and on next Sunday, when we are worshiping in the building, the title of the sermon will be More Than a Survivor. I pray that we will see you um, either virtually or we will see you um, in the building on November the 21st um, at 10 a.m. The Lord say the same. Amen. We bless God for all that has taken place in this worship experience, and we will stand, and wherever you are, we will stand and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you, God, for letting us be here today and letting us come together once again and just giving us a chance at something better than we already have. Thank you for helping people with their physical health and their mental health. It has been hard the past two years, but thank you for getting us through this struggle and through this storm. I would like to thank you for watching over the people who are not able to be with us anymore. But we know they are happy and that they are continuing on and being strong together. Please, God, forgive us for doing things that we are wrong and help us do better. Amen.
God says and calls us to praise God. Why? For you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a marvel in God's sight. You are a wonder of God's work. And I pray that you know it well. And I pray that the God of peace, the God of joy, the God of hope, the God of love, may that marvelous, all-seeing, all-knowing God, all-powerful God with the authority to do anything but fail, that that God will rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of you, hence now and forevermore, and the people of God saying, We hope you've enjoyed the programming of St. Mark AME Church. Here, spreading the word of our Lord and Savior is priority, as is living the word. That includes reaching more people with the gospel, serving more people in the community with our pop-up pantry, providing a place where people can feel a sense of belonging, and extending the love of Jesus in ways that include social justice. You can help St. Mark reach more people with your donation. It's easy. Simply give with a click of a button on our website, stmarkame.org, or by going to Givelify. Or you can simply mail your donation to 1616 West Atkinson Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53206. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.